G'day all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our ongoing video user guide for Astro Photography Tool. In this video we're going to be looking at the plan editor, just a basic overview of how it works so you can create at least some simple plans to get going. Um, it can become quite complicated and powerful using the plan editor, uh, the commands built into APT, scripts and with the new functionality in uh, session control there is just so much you can do now. So I'm going to cover all that in a big deep dive video but for now it's just going to be the basic overview of what you can do so you can get in and start creating some plans. Now it operates in two different modes, uh, they're only slightly different, uh, one for your DSLRs and one for your CCD and CMOS cameras. So I'm just going to go in now and do a general overview of uh, what they're like and then I'll go into each camera type separately. So here we go. Accessing the plan editor is quite simple on the camera tab. Uh, you either hit the edit button up the top here or you can double click in the uh, open space over here and that will open the plan editor as well. Now depending on what you've got set up in here already will depend on what the plan editor has when you open it. If you don't have a plan already selected it will just open up with a blank slate. If you have a plan selected uh, it will open that plan in the plan editor or if you're imaging uh, you can still access the plan editor but you can't access the uh, plan that's currently being used so it'll open up at a blank slate again so you know it depends on what you want to do um, you can open up that way so here we go is um, a plan selected here so I'm going to double click and the plan editor is opened and it opened up with that uh, plan there so starting at the top here you have your import and export button where you can import and export your plans. Um, you can import uh, plans that you've created on another computer from APT or you can export them and you can export either as all plans, current plans or the plan type. So that's something you can do there. Um, then you just browse to where you want to export it to. So you can create them on your, you know, your PC inside and take them out and put them on your imaging uh, computer if you want to do it that way. Um, next up is your plan selector and this is where you select the plan you want to do or whether you want to create a new plan. So to create a new plan all you do is you click on add new plan of the plan type so add new light plan and that gives you an empty uh, slate to work with for a new one. Uh, all you need to do then is go in here and give the plan a name and uh, away you go. So that's one way to do it there. Um, from here you can also delete one plan so if you click delete that plans now gone uh, a new feature in 4.40 is the ability to delete all plans of a particular type so you know if you don't want to I don't use mixed frame plans so I can go down the bottom here and uh, select delete all mixed frame plans it'll ask you do you want to delete all your mixed frame plans yes then it'll ask you again are you sure you want to do it so you can click yes and now all my mixed frame plans are, are all gone. There's none there. So you see that there. Um, and it works with, with all of them, um, whichever one you want to do. Now, from here, you can delete an individual plan as well from this line here, or you can rename it. So I'm going to pick a plan I don't really, not really interested in. That's big clone. There you go. Um, this line allows you to delete just a single plan so I can delete that one like that. You can also rename plans from here so I'll pick M78 and this is an LRGB plan so I can rename that to LRGB. So now it's stored as an LRGB plan as you can see there, there it is. So that's an easy way to rename the plans. Um, on the far right hand side here you can have a plans that you don't want to dither um, and if you don't want to dither a particular plan you can check that um, darks, flats etc are already don't dither this plan so you can't make that change that anyway but if you've got a light plan where you for some reason or other don't want to dither uh, you can check that um, a vertical plan this one's already been made into a vertical plan by checking that box and the difference is that uh, normally the plan will work that it will do all the exposures on line 1 then line 2 then line 3 
etc etc but with a vertical plan it does one image on each line at a time then loops back to the top now this can be handy if you're doing something like this where you're doing different exposure lengths or different filters or whatever and you're worried you might not get the time to complete you know the whole lot of them all at once uh, you may you know just cycle through them at least you'll get some of each of them done so you might be able to do a little bit of something with it but that's what a vertical plan does now in the under that you have the cloning um, which means you can clone a plan uh, as much as you like uh, to something else it can either be a same type of plan and it'll just come up with a clone name uh, it can be a different type of plan say you've got a light plan and you want to copy it over to do a dark frame plan with the uh, same times and settings and everything else we well, can simply do that by clicking dark frame plan and then it becomes the plan that's actually in here becomes the clone so this is actually the dark frame plan down here now you'll see it's under dark frame plans and it's listed as clone and of course you can rename that whatever you like it there uh, at the time uh, I don't need that plan so again a single plan delete is hit the delete button and you get no confirmation with that one okay just a warning so you don't delete it too quick directly under that is your plan information the lift list of exposures you're going to be having um, so I'll just open up my M78 again uh, so like the list you have there uh, what's on the columns available of course is different between the cameras the same as over here which is your actual information where you will be entering what you want uh, that varies depending on the camera you have uh, you have a ringy thingy to change settings there now once you do settings in here uh, you can either update the currently selected line if you have one uh, or you can add it as a completely new line So say I wanted to clone that line there I could just go add as new and it adds it as new and uh, or if I change something here I suddenly want uh, 30 second exposures I go as update current and it updates the current to be what you changed it to so that's those two there I don't need the extra line so I'll just delete that one and of course what you can do then is you can move your command your lines up down whatever you need to do so I can move this up move it down um, and of course as I said you can delete a line so delete over here will delete the selected line at the time so you can do it that way now over here is your script and commands and this is where it starts to get a bit more uh, complicated I'm not going to go into this much now as I said before I'll be doing a deeper dive into this but uh, clicking on the script and command opens up a box where you can select various commands from within APT um, you can do a go to plus plus a resolve or whatever if you want to change targets you can go to that and you can select your targets and everything else as I said, I'll go all through this in a later, later time because you need to set not only this up, but you need to also set up the exposure details for it. So that's a bit more complicated and that's something for another video. If you want to use a script, which is still the most powerful way to do uh, imaging in APT, despite changes to uh, session control and that, which integrates with what you've got in your plan editor, uh, session control has actually made plan editing a bit easier. Uh, once you get used to that and I'll be putting those together in one big uh, video later on but um, scripts are still the most powerful way to do things because it allows you not only to use commands from within APT to do things within APT but you can do things to files outside APT you can you do different things out there as well which what makes them so powerful you, know, you can move files around rename them copy them do what you want to do uh, or through a script and to use a script you need to put the path to the script in here um, so that's how that one works um, now wait for script to end if you're using a script um, you need to set this on if there's something to do with the plan in that script uh, without with with the internal commands APT waits for the kernel internal command to finish and then moves on to the next one um, but when you're running a script it doesn't do that it will run as soon as the script starts and if you need it to do something that will have an effect on the plan then you need to wait for the script to end and that's all that button does and finally down the bottom here uh, it shows you the expected duration of the plan uh, this includes the exposures themselves uh, any pauses you have um, an allowance for any commands you might have how long they might take 
sometimes it doesn't get anywhere near it on those um, but it tells you that and how many exposures you've got all up and the total of the light frames in this case so the total hours is 29 hour, uh, 29.2 minutes so that's how long that's going to take for my lights that's how many lights I'll get sorry and that's it for it um, and of course I've made changes in here now I've renamed this one and everything else as long as I don't hit OK everything I just did will be cancelled um, it doesn't stack up as you go along even those ones I've deleted will come back if I hit cancel uh, it's only once you hit OK will those changes take effect so you know I hit cancel there I reopen it again if I go back in uh, my M78 is back to M78 all my mixed frame plans are back but if I'd hit OK they would have all been gone permanently so that's just a little something on there so next I'm going to step up and take a look at uh, probably the Oh, what I've got to open here at the moment, the CMOS cameras, and what you can do with those ones. So we're right back. So this, of course, is the plan editor for a CCD on CMOS camera. Uh, the first difference we have is in the types of plans available. Um, light frames, they all have dark, uh, flat frames, bias frames focusing and dark flat plans are the same for both camera types uh, the difference here is you have a mixed frame plan for um, your CCD and CMOS but this only really works if you have a camera that has a mechanical uh, shutter uh, most modern CMOS cameras don't so it's pretty useless for them um, they have electronic rolling shutters which are totally different so you generally won't be using this unless you're uh, camera supports a mechanical shutter or you have some type of mechanical shutter you can uh, inter interleave with it somewhere along the way it is possible but uh, I don't know of many people who actually do that so it's just the plan types you get there are different and of course your headings your your line numbers your exposure length binning uh, gain offset if you want to use it um, pause between images the number of images and the filter use and any script or command you may have set up for that particular one and of course what you have to do is over here is exposure is going to be fine you have your binning now while it says binning one by one or two by two or whatever uh, simply because your binning is always one by one two by two whatever you don't have to enter the one x one uh, just entering a bin of one and uh, I'll go update current it automatically will convert it to 1.1 your gain you can set here now if you don't set a gain here it will use the last gain that you had set uh, so basically these dashes means don't change uh, same with the offset um, I generally just leave my offset for what's in the camera settings oh, I'm not going to go into that one I'm not on my real camera um, I set my offset in there so it's the same all the time um, if you set an offset in here it will override anything you've got set down there so that's just one thing there um, pause between your images the count uh, the filter you want to use and as you can see the double dash is no filter change um, if you wanted to do that um, then of course you update current add as new or you can add your script or command and that's basically the difference is between the two of them the main difference is like I said the uh, mixed frame plan that you can do if you have a mechanical shutter and the actual details you need to enter here and that's it so that's the CCD and CMOS camera done I'll be back shortly to do one uh, when I get around to reconnecting my other setup I'll have to do it on my live setup with my DSLR so I'll be back very very shortly So the plans editor for DSLR is very similar to the uh, CMOS and CDC, CCD camera one. Um, the only real difference is the information you enter and the plan types. And it loses the uh, mixed plan, mixed type plans uh, simply because they can't get the information on how not to open the shutter while an image is being taken, which is a pity. Uh, it would be very handy with a DSLR because they can do it and they... But, uh, apparently Canon and that won't release the information required for that um, but the, what you get in its place is an auto lights planned um, 
I'll just quickly go into here to show you what this is and these are quite handy if you're doing something like a lunar eclipse you don't set the exposure time you set everything else as normal but the exposure time will be calculated by the camera using the AV settings um, and that way if you're doing something like an eclipse it'll change the exposure length as the eclipse goes along so that's quite handy for that um, the other information you had I'll just I don't know if there's any oh yeah a quick demo plan I'll open that one up um, so everything up the top's the same between them all uh, the display here is pretty much the same just what you, information you've got what columns you've got uh, exposure ISO the pause the count the quality uh, AV setting and the filter setting and uh, of course your scripts and commands list there and on the right there's a bit of difference in this top part here uh, your exposure times you have that then you have your ISO you can set here um, if you leave that blank it will use the same exposure that was uh, ISO that was used on the last image you took um, and it'll come up like with the AV and filter here where it's dashes it says no change it'll use it whatever you took so if you've used ISO 1600 down in your camera tab and done a shoot it will use that same one uh, if you used a different one somewhere it will use that one and of course your pause and your image count uh, then you have your quality selections depending on what your camera can do um, generally if you're running a normal plan light plan you're running raw but if you're doing a, um, a focusing plan or a framing plan or whatever you might want to run in small or something just to speed things up a little bit with their file transfers but generally if you're doing a light plan or if you're doing a dark plan to match your light you'll want it in raw um, so that's one there um, or uh, get in there sorry about that uh, then you have your AV you're going to do the same as other things if you have it on no change it'll just use the last one you've used um, and then you can select your uh, AV you wish to use from this drop down list um, the reason this list actually lists a lot more than what your AV ones down here with is because it's not directly connected to what lens you're using at the time um, so it can be used with anyone you just need to make sure that it's within the uh, region of what you're going to be using so if you've got no change and you've set it down here it'll use that one but uh, if you have a change you can set it to what you want so that's what you can do there uh, I've gone back into quality again then you have filter uh, if you want to change your filter or whatever if you have a filter wheel connected you can do that there um, if you don't have a filter you can just leave it on no change because uh, there's no filter to change and then of course your update current add as new and scripts and commands and that's basically what the difference is between the two so I've shown you the uh, overall one which is covers everything and now you've seen both the different types of camera and that's all there really is to the plan editor uh, as I said earlier I'll be doing a more in-depth look at it uh, using commands and scripts and that later on uh, it's integration with uh, session craft now and uh, session control um, that's added a very 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 large amount of functionality and it actually will make scripting easier um, because it'll take over things like having to when you want to change targets and things like that all that's now handled by session control so you can just create one simple plan and away it goes but I'm starting to waffle on there now and that's something for another video so I'll leave it all here for now wishes all clear skies take care and I'll talk to you at another time bye